focus for this episode is the roofing industry. Hey everybody, Brad Stevens here, founder and CEO of Outsource Access with another episode here of How Outsourcing Works. I'm actually in our offices here in Cagayan de Oro, Philippines, and uh, so lucky to be here with Bell, one of our amazing staff working with the client uh, in the roofing industry. That is the focus for this episode is the roofing industry. Uh, I'm actually here during our annual trip. We've been excited to grow to over 500 employees in just four and a half years at Outsource Access, servicing a ton of different industries, over 70 industries, doing all functions, marketing, operations, customer service, uh, sales. But for a lot of you uh, out there, and if you're in the, the roofing industry or if you're even in the home services type of industry that may be related, the question is no longer does you know, offshore resources, you know, virtual systems, business process outsourcing, does it exist? We, we know it exists. The next question is, is how does this actually work? Uh, how am I actually going to have someone on the other side of the world integrate and plug into my business? What are they capable of? Are there language challenges? Are there time zone issues? Uh, we know those are the questions that you have. And uh, I used to do workshops traveling all over the country, doing three-hour workshops, educating business owners and entrepreneurs. And uh, with uh, the internet, this is actually way more efficient. <laughs> so I can do some videos and actually interview some of our staff and unpack their experience. Uh, so this series is just about that, for us to unpack and hear exactly how does this work, uh, whether you're in the roofing industry or similar home services industry, the story we'll uh, share with Belle here will help you kind of understand. So excited to interview her and share her experience, uh, who she's been working with, the client in the, in the roofing space. So thanks for taking the time to be with me. Thanks also, Brad. Thanks for having me on Service Access. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to dive in real quick. So you have been working for a client in the roofing industry, and you're actually the second uh, the second uh, VA that, that he's ended up adding over the last over the last year. Um, but before we get to that, let's just quick unpack your personal story, uh, kind of where, where you grew up here and kind of what ended up leading you to outsource access. No, I actually did not grow up here in Cagayan de Oro City. I oh. came from Bukidnon. Okay. And then I had my degree at Bukidnon also. But when I was uh, schooling, I was actually doing my work here at Cagayan de Oro City oh. during pandemic. So that's why when I graduated, I have two years of experience. And then after that, I resigned from my previous work, just actually in your neighborhood, like just, oh, just the near. next building, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just there, next building. And then I applied in Outsource Access via Indeed. Oh, yeah, okay. Indeed, yeah. And then I applied as marketing because of uh, my degree, but uh, the, the Outsource Access hired me as uh, accounting staff because of my experience, my two years experience. And when I was also in school, I also had some accounting background. Also, it's part of our, um, it's part of our course. So yeah, oh, it's gotcha. also much, much. And that's one thing that's great. I mean, in, in the Philippines, you know, the, the quick, the quick ability to learn and adapt. You know, with the type of work we're doing for our clients. Um, I mean, you guys are not shy at all to quickly learn and, and absorb, and, and you get to speak quickly on on something. And so you're able to take some of your prior accounting work and quickly build on that. Uh, which I know it translated into working with your client. Yeah. So that's how you end up finding out about us, applying through kind of Indeed and kind of going through the process and they yeah. looked at your skill set and ability and then ended up making the, the match to uh, to Carlos yes. uh, with Mr. Roofing Inc. Uh, he's been out in California, right? Yes, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah. San, uh, San Francisco, California. Yeah, I think he's out, out uh, maybe just moved south of that. Um, and you're actually the second VA. So Carlos actually in the roofing industry with us, he started a, a year ago. Um, Arjun actually was his first VA uh, from yeah. us that he hired. Arjun's fantastic. Been, been working with Carlos. And Arjun initially, you know, during our discovery process, we kind of go through and unpack like what are the needs and requirements um, you know, of, of the client. And we kind of ask what are the constraint points of things you're trying to get off of your plate? What are the things you're not getting to in the business? We have a very structured process. Um, and so Arjun, kind of the first round of things he was helping with, I think you're saying like he first started off uh, just doing a lot of just general administrative support, kind of doing spreadsheet cleanup, yeah. doing a, a variety of things, and ended up stepping into some other functions. So just from your knowledge, kind of what his journey was, and we'll talk about how you get it, ended up getting added. Yeah, so Arjun basically does all the general administrative tasks, and then the production team also. He does the production calendar. He follows up if the uh, production or the project is ongoing, if the, the what do you call this, the status of the projects. Yeah. And then afterwards, I think he dives into TQM right now. I think it's more on like the quality management of okay. the company. And then afterwards, uh, 
Carlos actually asked him if he does accounting stuff, and <laughs> he, he said that he doesn't do those stuff. And I think that's the prior lead that uh, Carlos actually was in, uh, interested in taking another VA that has like an accounting background because I think the tasks are about like pre accounting stuff, uh, what they call this bank reconciliation, credit card reconciliation, right. the payroll stuff. And I think right now there's another task that is pending. So he's got, yeah, so once he realized really. your skill sets and ability, he's starting to find other things in the financial yeah. category. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens you know, a lot with our clients that, that we work with. So we're, we're very intentional. We create a whole detailed, structured playbook from day one of all the things that we're doing. We document all those processes. It's actually one of the big benefits that people love working with outsource access for. Um, so it sounds like you know, our June started off initially with administrative functions, doing a lot of spreadsheet cleanup, yeah. um, and then ended up doing project management, all the roofing projects that they have going on. I think he does roofing, uh, direct roofing projects, also does solar, uh, yeah. gutters, kind of anything related to, to the roof. Um, and uh, so the, the role grew and ended up being you know, fully loaded in a, in a whole range of administrative uh, operational type tasks. And then he started picking up on social media, I think you yeah, said, right? right, right now. He's posting <laughs> on Instagram and Facebook. So he's doing a lot of stuff in social media. Oh, nice. And that's, again, the beauty of sort of the, the Filipino talent. They're very flexible and, you know, being able to do both things, you know, administrative type of work, but then also picking up on social media. And, you know, a lot of our clients that falls into that bucket of things they're not getting to, they wish they were doing, you know, wish we were doing more social media, but, you know, they can't afford to, you know, pay a full-time agency or a full-time person, you know, locally. Uh, so it's a great add-on thing that we're able to do. And Filipinos are very, very talented visually, creatively. So it's kind of, I find like every Filipino has some kind of creative outlet, whether it's photography or painting, but just have a really good intuition on, on aesthetics. So it sounds like Arjun kind of, he leveraged that ability uh, with him so he's doing social media and actually celebrating when one of our clients actually was in the painting industry um, and uh, actually I actually was talking to that client and they were not taking before and after pictures at all when they were doing painting projects so they were going out and doing painting projects and then going to the next one and they weren't posting anything about the before and after so one of the things we talked about was like hey for your VA whenever you have your painters go out in the field have them go do a before picture of the home and then do an after picture and then send it to the VA right so in the subject line they would put um, what the name of the client was, attach the photos, send it to the VA in the Philippines. The VA would then take a, a template inside of Canva, make a before and after image, put their logo on it, then go log into the owner's LinkedIn account, and then go post it, and then tag the customer in it. Yeah. So that's just an example, and it sounds like he may be doing some similar types of things, yeah. um, of being able to just now all of a sudden the visibility of the work that they, that they were doing with, with painting houses now all of a sudden got way more visible, engaged, and generated and lots more business. Um, so I have to check if Arjun is actually running that exact playbook. That that's a really great thing to do on before and afters when you're doing you know, social work. Um, so it sounds like he did great. And then so that led to, you know, when he asked about accounting needs, that kind of led to filling the gap. And uh, so that's where you kind of came into the picture. So you've yeah. been with him about six months. So let's talk about sort of what are the tasks that you've been tackling. So first, uh, my task was more on like data entry for the CRM management. Like the receipts, all the receipts of the project managers, they will send it to me and then afterwards I put it on my own spreadsheet and then put it on the CRM. How are they sending you receipts? Just curious like how that process By I, Via iMessage. Oh really? Yeah. Because that's the question, you know, a lot of people back to that how outsourcing works. It's like, well how am I actually going to use someone? So let's use that as an example. Let's like break down that process. So when you kind of got you integrated, so you got project managers out in the field. Mm -hmm. So you had to kind of create a workflow of like, okay, how can they get receipts kind of sent over to you? So let's walk through step by step. Like how are they doing that? So after they purchase, they they had their credit cards they use their credit cards i right. know their credit cards what are their expenses and then after that after that they'll send it to me if they forgot to send it i'll just give them a little reminder that, hey <laughs> i think you forgot to send your receipt this is yeah. the like from lowe's or the home depot this is the this is the um the vendor and this is the amount can you send it to me so that we can put it in our crm or crm is contractors cloud and okay, contract first cloud? Contractors. Contractors yeah. cloud. Yeah, gotcha. contractors cloud. Because each, each of the clients we work with, that's the other thing, is we become experts in their actual CRM, the software that's unique to their industry, and it sounds like that's the one that the roofing industry is yeah. using. So, so the problem was is he was having his project managers out there run things on credit cards, but they weren't getting receipts in to reconcile, so you were able to fill that gap. Yeah. With, with gentle reminders that so you would text. So they're actually just texting you yeah. the, the receipt the so receipts. you can save them and have those saved to reconcile with the expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have it on the QuickBooks also. And then because the QuickBooks doesn't really uh, in reconcile with the yeah. CRM, so I'm the middleman, I'm, I mean, <laughs> middle woman, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> middle woman for it. So I put it on the CRM and then it will help job cost so that uh, Carlos, my client, will have an insight if the project 
was too expensive or was it good or not or or is it good for paying the people or not right yeah it's kind of good to know if a project's profitable or not yeah. and again that's a great i'm glad you shared that because that's a that's one of those things a lot of times small to medium businesses they just don't have a handle on their finances a lot of times and they're going a thousand miles an hour and you know i'm not saying that's the case for carlos but in general a lot of times and so having someone that can do the reconciliation so now you can actually see like profitability of projects yeah of how you're kind of capturing mm -hmm. that information. Profit and loss, yeah. All right, so you're chopping uh, expenses from project managers and helping getting receipts loaded in and reconciliated. Um, what else? After that, uh, they, I think uh, Carlos, I gained Carlos's trust. Yeah. I was actually assigned to payroll afterwards. It was a bit of, um, what do you call this? Intimidating for me because, yeah. wow, <laughs> <laughs> payroll. How many staff? How many employees? I is mean, it? it's more like, 30 below but it's not really that big thing if it's the just the general payroll the thing that i'm doing is the sales commission payroll ah. like the sales people if they'll have their commission or not uh, look into the gross profit and then their percentage of their income oh so you're in charge of commissions yes. so you're, you're an important woman <laughs> yeah so that's kind of like when every time that Carlos will say every time we with the meet we have a meeting he'll say okay you can approve it I was like no Carlos this is too big <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of intimidated by the high amount of um, numbers and then he said that you have I have one um, lesson that he gave me you have to be like you have to be how do you call this I think I forgot what the English about it you have to be uh, give me a minute you have to be very familiar with big numbers. You have uh, comfortable yeah. with, right? As you have far to as be comfortable with it because we are aiming high. Yeah. And if you're comfortable with big numbers, then it'll be just you know just a daily task or like a bi-weekly task for you. You just have to submit, um, you know, approved, and then I'll just look into the report and all good. And I was like, <laughs> that's a big number. <laughs> but, well, it's a testament yeah. to you, first of all, that he trusted me. You obviously did. Great work. One of our core values here is attention to detail. We have to have that core value to, to be successful in our, in our business. And so having that led him to trust to actually handle something like payroll and know that it's being calculated correctly and so yeah. forth. So you're the salesperson's either favorite or least favorite person when that, uh, when that yeah, paycheck they have hits. Yeah, a uh, neutral relationship with me. I don't know if it's a love and hate situation <laughs> for them. <laughs> yeah, they, sometimes they'll ask if, uh, what are the closed projects? Can I see what are the, you know, the specifics of the payroll or, uh, or sometimes they have some concerns and i'll just address it professionally <laughs> <laughs> but i mean again you know look at an owner like carlos when you talk about taking things off of his plate so that he can focus yeah. from a growth standpoint i'm sure that's all stuff that came to him mm -hmm. right sales reps complaining or asking about completion of a job or were they getting paid or not yeah. and so forth um so fortunately slash unfortunately uh, you know, you're able to kind of be that that intermediary yeah. that can handle that interface and it kind of keeps off his plate. That translates into growth and focusing on bigger things. I know he actually just went to a big roofing conference. I think some of our yeah. other folks that uh, saw him down there, where that's where's the highest and best use of you know of his time. So, yeah. uh, so that's awesome. So translated, so you're managing kind of expense reports, project management, receipts being sent in, doing reconciliations on you know the accounting side, managing payroll. So is that kind of the span that you're doing right now, fully? Yes, else? and then another one. I think uh, we're still ongoing this with this one with Maria. It's a new task. Like I have to monitor the timesheets, like the QuickBook timesheets of some specific um, project uh, hmm. people, project staff, because they're schooling, and then I have to monitor the time that they uh, that they spend for that specific project. I have to give a report monthly for it, and I just I think I gave the report for October. I don't know if. It's good yet. It doesn't touch uh, my so it's direct. It's Maria. She didn't give uh, feedback yet. Oh, gotcha. So this is a new thing, right? And that's again how the journey goes. With a lot of our clients, they you know start getting trust, and they figure other things they can layer on, you know, to, to add more support. Um, so no, that's a great. I mean, in terms of timesheets and project management and allocation of time and making sure you know people are being truthful with their time too, as far as what's being reported. I know we have another client in the in the, in the services space and the. Uh, um, they do uh, commercial refrigeration repair, and one of the first things they have one of their one of their VAs do is reconcile GPS reports that the drivers were reporting that were doing the work out in the field, and then their actual timesheets. So it was actually able to the VA would virtually from the Philippines log into the GPS report system, export, and then look at what the employee supported as timesheets, and say, hey, um, GPS report says that you were doing this and you supported this timesheet, and it was able to find save like fifty thousand dollars in payroll um, in the first in the first quarter. So. Uh, 
you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of dollars that can add up with timesheets and data being managed. But again, busy entrepreneurs when it comes to managing and using data appropriately. Uh, so it sounds like you're taking on a ton for him to yeah. help with profitability, help with uh, scalability, and, and probably just sanity for him having that off of his yeah. plate. And he's got, I'm assuming, family? Cars? Yes, he does a family. He had, uh, I think he had two ch children. Two kids? Two kids, yeah. yeah. But they're already graduated. I think the youngest is still in college and still in university. Yeah. But it's, I mean, that's one thing I've found is, you know, you start getting this stuff freed up as a business or an entrepreneur, you kind of have reducing the number of unresolved conflict loops is what I call them when you have resources and support that are handling that stuff. And uh, I'm sure it's, it's been very relieving for him, maybe taking some extra vacations and uh, enjoying life a little bit more. So, yeah. well, thanks so much for, uh, for being here with me, Belle, today and unpacking uh, a little bit of what it means of how outsourcing works behind the scenes and digging in a little bit. What does it look like? What's the type of work that we're doing? Um, so that if you're in the roofing industry specifically or anything in the home services, uh, commercial services space, or frankly any other industry, to be honest, we're, we're servicing everything from insurance agents to concrete manufacturers to, uh, to roofing uh, companies, love to, to connect with you. So you just go visit outsourceaccess.com forward slash roofing specifically for that industry or just outsourceaccess.com in general. You can see videos kind of behind the scenes of our whole operation and how we work and you can book a call, uh, sign up for a webinar if you want to get some detailed case study examples or just a detailed playbook as well for the roofing industry. So you can read a little more details from the things we talked about with Bell today that we're doing uh, for that industry. So until next time, Brad Stevens, Outsource Access, how outsourcing works. We'll see you next time.